morning i'm mr munir tayapurail teaching grade 12 bilingual welcome to tabarak private school education platform we have to thank our respected chairman mr yunus al rahbi for connecting the school with the students through this educational bridge hello my dear students today we are going to talk about a very famous poem named September 1913 written by great Irish poet W.B. Yeats. This poem is a very important one in the history of Ireland as it was written in response to two historical events in Ireland. first historical context Yeats wrote several poems in response to the public controversies chilled by Sir Hugh Lane's offer of his collection of paintings to the city of Dublin and the Dublin dock lockout of 1913 here Hugh Lane was a friend of Yeats and related to Lady, Lady Gregory one of his patrons so Hugh Lane was a great artist and his paintings were really valuable but the Dublin municipality was not ready to pay for his paintings and they decided to close the art gallery which was named under Hugh Lane only because they cared for money they knew that it was not going to be beneficial for them so they decided to close it so the first context of this poem is WB Yeats response to this context means the closure of Hugh Lane Art Gallery number two was the Dublin lockout what was Dublin lockout it was a major industrial dispute or a fight between approximately 20,000 workers and 300 employers which took place in Ireland's capital city. This dispute lasted from 26 August 1913 to 18 January 1914 and is often viewed as the most severe and significant industrial dispute in Irish history. So this fight was also a reason for this poem. W. B. Yeats decided to write this poem September 1913 mainly because of two reasons. The first one the closure of Hugh Lane Art Gallery and the second one is the lockout 1913. Now the form of the poem is almost a ballad with a refrain. As you know a ballad tells us stories which is popular in Irish culture, one of his most sarcastic poems. He chooses this form in order to mock. He mocks in this poem the modern Irish society or the society in 1913 that has become narrow-minded, greedy, selfish, and cool. First stanza. Let's go through the poem. The poem can be divided into four stanzas. Each stanza has eight lines. Let's read and analyze the poem. The first stanza. What need you being come to sense but fumble in a greasy till? and add half pence to the pence and prayer to shivering prayer until you have dried the marrow from the bone.
for men were born to pray and save romantic Ireland is dead and gone it's with all your in the grave here yeah, from the beginning of the poem you can find the tone is bitter he is angry what is the reason for it what need you being come to sense what do you need and what is the reason for your coming to sense but fumble in a greasy till your till is a cash register so you do not have any other sense but your only sense is for money means you care only for money and you do not care for anything else and add the half pence to the pence so each penny or pence are added because you do not want to share it with the poor people or those who need money and prayer to shivering prayer until you have dried the marrow from the bone and your prayer is just shivering prayer means you are religious in name only and you have dried the marrow from the bone and the marrow which is the white substance inside the bones so you have utilized people poor people or even servants or farmers all of them so you have taken their flesh their blood and even the marrow this is an exaggeration for men were born to pray and save people were born to pray and save here it can be a pun with different meaning pray and save so people were born to pray to god and save their souls but here p r e y pray the same sound but you are actually pray your prayer is not prayer you pray on other animals like animals you pray on other people and save money therefore romantic ireland is dead and gone it's with o'leary in the grave we are going to discuss o'leary later in this lesson so now romantic ireland is dead and gone it is unromantic it has become selfish greedy narrow minded ireland means the society or the people have become really greedy materialistic people they do not care for anything but money here stanza 1 when you just go through the points you can find is attacking against the apathy of the business owners in dublin or it's a direct retaliation to the general strike or the lockout he is disgusted by the business owners as they are undermining the true romantic ireland and add half pence to the pence and prayer to shivering prayer these lines are very important money and religion are all they care about pence is such a small amount which emphasizes they agreed here is the second stanza yet they were of different kind the names that still your childish play they have gone about the world like a wind but little time had they to pray for whom the hangman's rope was spun and what god help us could they save romantic ireland is dead and gone it's with all you read in the grave yet they were of different kind who were they here the poet is talking about the irish heroes those heroes were really different far better than the new irish society the names that still your childish play their names or the heroes changed your childish play they made you serious 
they made you inspired and motivated to learn and read their stories they have gone about the world like a wind it's a simile they are being compared to wind they were powerful like a wind and they were fast like a wind but little time had they to pray they didn't have enough time to pray for whom the hangman's rope was spun because hangman's rope was ready for them on their neck means they were killed by the mighty British army and what God help us could they save what could they save they couldn't save anything they couldn't save their lives and they couldn't save the country but they lost their lives and now they have lost their country also here yet they were of different kind talking about great heroes of Ireland and comparing them to the business owners now this is stanza 3 was it for this the wild geese spread the gray wing upon every tide for this that all that blood was shed for this Edward Fitzgerald died and Robert Emmett and Wolf Tone all that delirium of the brave romantic island is dead and gone it's with all eerie in the grave was it for this here the tone is even bitter that he expressed his anger towards the Irish middle class was it for this type of people or this type of country the wild geese means the Irish soldiers or heroes reached everywhere for this all that blood was shed means all of them died heroes like Edward Fitzgerald Robert Emmett Wolf Tone all of them died were they all mad here yeah. when you analyze the stanza you can find the wild geese spread wild geese is a metaphor for the Irish men who went abroad to fight wars for other nations Repetition for this emphasizes its desperation towards the current situation in Ireland. Now, stanza four. Yet, could we turn the years again and call those exiles as they were in all their loneliness and pain? You would cry, some woman's yellow hair has maddened every mother's son. They weighed so lightly what they gave. But let them be, they are dead and gone. They are with O'Leary in the grave. Here, the poet thinks of the possibility to go back to past and call those exiles, means the heroes have gone from their loneliness and pain. If we call them back, what would happen? You would cry, means you, the Irish middle class, would cry and shout that they were all really mad because of their love for their country means a patriotism so patriotism or nationalism made them mad and they lost their life so poet feels like let them stay there they are dead and gone it's better for them to stay there in their graves and not to come back here a woman's yellow hair can be a reference to Kathleen and also some people or some Irish writers have used it even symbolizes Ireland they weighed so lightly what they gave suggesting that if you truly care about Ireland your life is nothing this is John O'Leary that is the person he is used in his poem this is a refrain that O'Leary, it's with O'Leary in the grave. He was a great symbol of Irish nationalism. Then Edward Fitzgerald, an Irish aristocrat and revolutionary, he was the fifth son of the first Duke of Leinster. He died of wounds received in resisting the arrest on charge of. Then the Irish nationalist Robert Emmett. These are the heroes that W.B. Yeats mentioned in the poem. Then the last one was Wolf Tone. 
He was also a leading Irish revolutionary figure and one of the founding members of the United Irishmen and regarded as the father of Irish republicanism. He was captured by British forces following the 1798 rebellion before he was to be executed. Wolf Toon attempted suicide and subsequently died from his wounds. Here is a homework for you. Read the poem September 1913 and answer the question. How does W.B. Yeats display the difference between the Irish heroes and modern Irish people in September 1913? Write at least 160 words. Should talk about the lines which compare the heroes and the modern people in Ireland, then the literary devices, imagery, everything. Thank you all. Hope you enjoyed. Homeworks and other activities are downloaded on Model on Tabarak website. If you have any inquiry, email to Tabarak Private School.